Hi there. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to be able to use analog gear wherever you are um, at any time? Today we're going to have a look at that. Hi there, I'm Ulfat Hoberik. Um, as some of you know, I sometimes like to bring work on vacation. And uh, like this week, we're out in our summer house fixing the garden and stuff. And the weather is nice outside, so I thought I would just sit outside and work today on my laptop. The only drawback with working in the box is that I don't have the analog output gear available to do some stuff that you can do with that. But there are companies now that are looking into solving this issue, and one of them are Mix Analog. They have a wide collection of analog gear that you can use in the cloud. So we're going to have a look at that. Yeah, so this is what their homepage looks like. Uh, processor tracks online, uh, rail analog gear, full control, great pricing, some of what kind of gear they have kind of workflow, some user reviews, the usual things, and the pricing plans. The thing I'm using now is pay as you go, but if you want to use it a lot, I would probably suggest having a monthly subscription. So let's jump into it. Yeah, this is what the initial interface looks like. And up here you can see how many credits you have to use for processing, and you can obviously buy more. Uh, we're going to start here with a new project start with uploading a file so here we see what kind of gear we have uh, first off 1176 revision a it's free to use for 15 minutes i think and also this expressor is free to use also for 15 minutes if you're going to use it longer you're going to have to pay with the tokens now we have some bundles. This is uh, like a mastering chain. And this is also some Elysia stuff. We have compressor and EQ. Uh, compressors, 1176 again. And I have the gear of uh, passive aggressive. The expressor, Fairchild compressor. Yes. Have some limiters. Again, there we have the mastering chain. Uh, distortion units. Obviously some tape machines, this is the Telefunken M15, the Studer, and the uh, Alicia stuff again. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. When I do recordings with bands, I, I try to implement as much of the analog flavor as possible during the recording. So when it's time for the mix, which I usually do in the box or a hybrid, uh, there's not that much to do. Uh, all the flavor is already there, so it's basically just bring it all together. But the problem is when I get a mix from a band that's recorded by themselves or in another studio uh, that doesn't work the way I do, uh, I don't have the benefits of those things. So when Mix Analog reached out to me and asked if I wanted to have a look at their service, I was really intrigued. So I have not been trying it. I have this band called Ilvilja. They just sent me uh, an EP to mix and the vocals are recorded raw. Uh, usually I record through an LA-2A and 1176 on a pretty high gain reduction. Um, that way it's pretty easy to get, get the vocals to sit in the mix uh, and I don't have to throw thousands of plugins on it in the mix session. So my thought today is uh, I'm going to try to do just that, uh, run the vocals through this service by Mix Analog and see if they can help me out. First thing I want to do is to run the vocals through some optical compressor. And since I don't have the LA-2A, I'm going to try this gear of uh, Passive Aggressive out. Um, not sure we're going to get it to sound like an LA-2A, but uh, at least it's optical. Uh, I haven't worked with it before, so bear with me. Yeah, I want a lot of compression, so I'll turn those thresholds down to the lowest value possible. Let's turn this ratio up. Um, it's a mono recording, but I'm not sure how it works with the stereo stuff on this one. So I just try to make the same settings on left and right. Uh, pretty slow attack to imitate uh, LA-2A, also slow release. 
I'm turning the feed to feedback because I know that's the what the LA2 AR doing. This elliptic thing, I'm not really sure about. It seems to be some mid side thing with stereo mono. So I turn it to mono because it's a mono signal. But it seems to make the signal tilt a little bit to the left or right, I mean. Um, So we take it back to, to the center and we get the center placed image. I guess that's better. <laughs> now when I'm satisfied with this, uh, I will go ahead and uh, click bounce. And here I can add to Q because I have two vocalists that I will process. So I just cue this one and then I load the second vocal track. Just make sure it sounds okay on this source too. Yeah, that's good. So we add that to the queue. And now we're going to start process. So it, this will take as, as much time as the vocal tracks are long since this is done in real time over at their headquarters. And when it's done, you can download the tracks, but we're going to do some further processing through this 1176 as I usually do after the LA2A. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead, fast attack and release. I'm thinking about going to 4 on the ratio. That's what I usually do, but we'll have a listen first. I don't want it to compress too much on this one, just like touch the worst peaks and uh, like minus 3 dB reduction at most. Yeah, I think that will do. And again, also the second vocal track. Okay, so let's see what we got and uh, do some comparisons. Uh, the two tracks here on the top is are the original tracks with no compression. The two in the middle are with the gear off and the bottom ones are with 1176 together with the gear off. So let's start listening to the original tracks. And then with some optical compression on it, uh, you'll, you can see on the tracks that there are still some peaks, but the overall level are more even than before. Also with the 1176, and this is when it started to glue together, I think. Uh, this is the final result. I must say I'm perfectly happy with that, and you can also see on the actual waves that this is totally evened out and uh, stable and nice. As you can see, this service is uh, amazing if you want to be uh, traveling and still want to use analog gear. Um, my thoughts are like running. I would love to have this uh, available with my own stuff that I could like, especially for a mastering chain, if I can put something together that, that I'm usually using. Uh, now, if I could have it available from, from home or from here or from wherever I am, that would be 
quite something, and then you could like go back and do revisions and stuff. Uh, you don't. I mean, you print you print what you do on mix analog, but you can go back and do revisions uh, without it being a huge issue. So. Thank you Mix and Low for letting me check this out. Uh, I will most likely use this every now and then from now on. Uh, it's really, really cool. So, thank you so much for watching. See you again in the next one. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>